Today's recipe is Cheonggukjang. Now, Cheonggukjang is one of those recipes that I was hesitant to make because mm. when you cook it, it smells. It's very pungent. But it smells a lot. <laughs> but then when you like taste it or you see the raw ingredient, which I'm going to show you later, it's not pungent. So Cheonggukjang, I think um, it hits a, a, a string in your heart because when you're young, for most Koreans, you end up or you grow up eating Jjigae, which is the soybean stew. But as you get older, you like something a little bit more flavorful, deeper. even deeper, like an upgraded version, a stronger version. And that's what Cheonggukjang is. All right. So for those who have moved outside of Korea and you're craving Cheonggukjang, but you live somewhere random where there's no Korean restaurant, mm -hmm. make it like this because this is um, more closer to like a restaurant style. It's, it's really good. Mm. So. I didn't grow up liking Cheonggukjang, but now I like it. Yeah. I'm more I, open to it. Yeah. I'm happy because mm -hmm. I love it. I'm a country boy style. Yeah. But when he makes Cheonggukjang, the whole apartment knows he's making Cheonggukjang. <laughs> Sorry, neighbors. <laughs> All right, neighbors, let's start off by looking at Cheonggukjang. You can find Cheonggukjang in the refrigerator section of a Korean supermarket. Unlike Tenjang, this is not a paste, it's soybeans that are partially like mashed. I eat Cheonggukjang a lot, so I already have a half, which is all we need today. And I'll just show you what it looks like. We're gonna need around 125 grams. You don't need to be exact. Now the process to make this is very similar to Japanese natto, but natto to make it, you use salt, whereas this has no salt in it. This is just pure soybean that has been fermented. And for natto, the fermentation is, um, they get the bacteria from a culture, whereas uh, when you ferment uh, this Korean Cheonggukjang, uh, the bacteria just comes from the air. So that's another big difference here. At the very end, we're going to just break it apart into the stew. That's what gives it its kind of chunky texture. But the base flavor will come from Tenjang paste and also some aged or stir-fried kimchi combination of the two builds that base. Now, of course, you can add a lot of vegetables, but for me, Cheonggukjang, I like it simple, not too many like colored vegetables. I like to keep it simple with some onions and some tofu, and that's it. I'm gonna do half an onion, just rough chops, and then half a pack of tofu. We're gonna do firm tofu. This should be, it's gonna be 150 grams. Chop it up into bite-sized squares. And then I'm going to do half a Cheongyang chili pepper. You can also use half a jalapeno pepper. Um, the reason is this soup is very umami, it's very heavy. And then the spice just gives it an uplifting flavor. Should be good enough. Now we're going to build the base of the stew. And what I like to do is I like to add in some meat. I'm going to use some thinly sliced pork belly. This one is called tepe samgyeopsal. So samgyeopsal you know from Korean barbecue, but it's thicker. This one is cut very, very uh, thin and it's sold at the Korean market like this, tepe samgyeopsal. Just use a handful. You can also use beef if you like. Just get that in there. Ah, I should add just a little bit of oil to get that going. Just a little bit. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna add some tenjang to this because this is where uh, the base flavor is. See, normal tenjang is fermented for months, whereas that cheonggukjang is not that long, all right? So two heaping tablespoons, second heaping tablespoon in, and then we're going to add half a cup of aged kimchi. And if you don't have it, you can just use stir fried kimchi. They usually sell it in small packets. That's what I'm using right now. This is stir fried kimchi and it works just as great. A lot of times I don't have any like aged kimchi in the refrigerator. So you got the tenjang in there. You got the fat from the pork belly, and then you got that stir-fried kimchi, and you're bringing all the flavors together. This should be on medium heat, guys. You don't want that tenjang to burn. All right, just about a minute or two of stir-frying until you don't see any more pink in the meat. And then we're going to add two and a half cups of water. Two. Two and a half cups. Now, I added just water, but I'm going to add in a tablet of um, all-natural anchovy kelp broth tablets. All right. This one, this one is really good. It's called Kamaso Yuksu. You can find it on Gochi Chart. It's all just made with all natural ingredients. But yes, the normal way, if you don't have those tablets, use two and a half cups of anchovy kelp broth. Or if you don't have anchovy kelp broth, you know when you wash your rice, we call it saltemul, that residual rice water. I want you to use two and a half cups of that because that starchy water will soak in the flavors and bring all the flavors together. All right, that might have been confusing, but you basically want two and a half cups of anchovy kelp broth. 
I just use water plus the anchovy kelp tablets because it's much just much more convenient and the flavor is great. Once that comes up to boil, I'm going to add in our onions as well as our tofu. Then I have four cloves of garlic. We're going to mince that in there. Now up till now, this is like a kimchi slash tengjang chige stew. Let's put that in there. Then I want you to set a timer for about five minutes so that the onions and all that flavor can come together. Reduce the heat to a medium. We're just going to be patient and give it around five minutes so that onions can turn soft, the kimchi, just everything. Time. After about five minutes, now till now, it's not going to smell that bad. This is just like tengjang jjigae or kimchi jjigae or a little bit of both. It's not that bad. By the way, it's looking delicious, right? Now, this is what separates the boys from the men. Boys to men. We drop in the chonggukjang. In. Just work at it. It'll break apart. It's kind of like a curry block. Just keep working at it. And chonggukjang for me, I always envision my mom making this or my harmony. It's like, I don't know, it's such a soul food for a Korean. And so I like to serve it in tukbegi. This one is on gochujar as well. Beautiful, beautiful tukbegi. And we're going to put the stew in there and serve. Now, if you look, that chonggukjang has mixed in well, that little block. And now you'll see like whole pieces of soybean. And this is what we want to pour over rice. All right. I want this to reduce down just a little bit more. Ah, but there's one thing that I like to do. This one is a bit orange. I like to give it a little bit more of a reddish tint with some gochukaru. I'm going to add in my chili peppers. And then about a teaspoon of gochukaru. Right? This is going to bring out a reddish tint, which just makes it look more appetizing. Mix that in and you see the color changing. From here, reduce the heat to a low. And then just give it a five more minutes. All that flavor is going to come together. You see it's turned a little bit more red. And I forgot to mention, but of course, you got to eat this with some freshly cooked rice. This is not something you eat like chili. Final five minutes. Let me give it a little taste. Oh my God, so good. Five. All right, that final five minutes is up. I'm going to, wait, just take a look at this. See how chunky that is? Ah. So I'm going to move this to our tukbegi. I'll just put the lid on. This is for presentation. It's going to come back up to a boil. We need a little bit of a fried egg on the side, of course. I got you, I got you. All right, and Katie, would you like to do the honors? It's not that hot. Yeah, it's not that hot. Mm. Oh, I love this pot. Wow. Welcome to Korea. Welcome to Korea, guys. This is your Cheonggukjang, like that restaurant style that you're like, oh my God. <laughs> that chunkiness is there. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, I can see the kimchi. And just one thing, when you taste this, and if it tastes a little bit salty to you, you can add in a little bit of water. And also, the next day, it tastes the best the next day. If it over reduces, just add a little bit of water and, 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 and Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle? That's right. You mean Uncle Bob? I'm ready to eat! Alright, we're gonna get that fried egg on the side. Sensu, sensu! We get that fried egg to the side. Boom. Get some kogi on there too. Yes, kogi is just so opti. And just have a delicious spoonful. And that's how you eat chonggukjang, y'all. I can't believe that you can have this kind of taste at home. <laughs> that's why we future neighbor, baby. Oh, that? Mashisa? Mashisa. Mashisa. Alright, I think I said this on our podcast or maybe here, but. Uh, my mom made this when we first moved to North Carolina. We were living in an apartment there. And then um, our next door neighbors called the cops because they thought we were cooking our cat. That's what I remember Chongbukja. Yeah. How can you forget that? And that traumatic incident, I think that's why I was so scared of this food for so long. But, uh, but now you are in the homeland, so yeah. you are free to cook whatever. Yeah. But once you see how it's made, you'll know it's like it's nothing smelly. It's just the when the, the beans get cooked, it, it smells so. Kind of like natto. Yeah. Like you, at first sight, you might not necessarily like it, but just over time, you'll... Amazing. Amazing? Amazing. You forgot the egg. Mm. 
All right, since it's Chuseok next week, we're not going to be around. Um, when you say goodbye in Korean, there's two versions. 안녕히 계세요 and 안녕히 가세요. So if someone is leaving, 안녕히 가세요. If, if you're the person that's leaving that person's house, you're leaving, that person's staying, it's 안녕히 계세요. I'm surprised you get it right. After so many years. <laughs>